So rate of translation is the distance travel in a linear direction in a unit time and the rate of rotation is denoted by omega vector and it has three components if the motion is three dimensional and obviously if the motion is only one dimensional then it will be reduced to half of partial derivative of w with respect to y minus partial derivative of v with respect to z. So this is for x direction denoted by here with respect to uh, the unit vector i. The i is the unit vector in x direction. Plus in the y direction the component of uh, rate of rotation will be half of the partial derivative of u with respect to z minus partial derivative of w with respect to x and j is the uh, unit vector in the y direction plus half of partial derivative of v with respect to x minus partial derivative of u with respect to y. The three components together represent the vorticity vector we call it also the, or the rotation rate of rotation and this is in i j k direction and as, as I have said if the motion is only in the x direction for example then this vector will be reduced to half of partial derivative of w by y minus partial derivative of z. The other components will be reduced to zero. So linear strain rate is defined as the rate of increase of length per unit length. This is a standard definition for linear strain that is in a straight line. In Cartesian coordinates that is in the rectangular coordinates x, y, z we will have epsilon x, x. x, x means that it is in the x direction. So partial derivative of u with respect to x, e, y, y partial derivative of v with respect to y and in the z direction it will be epsilon z z. The, the component epsilon z in the z direction is partial derivative of w by uh, with respect to z. So it will be delta w by delta z as we normally call it and all of you would be familiar with this notation which we study in calculus. Volumetric strain rate in Cartesian coordinates is described as if V is the volume 1 over V dV capital DV by dt and that is equal to epsilon xx plus epsilon yy plus epsilon zz and that will be equal to delta u by delta x that is partial derivative of u with respect to x plus partial derivative of v with respect to y and partial derivative of w with respect to z. The volumetric strain rate is will be zero in an incompressible flow uh, which this means it is obvious that if the fluid is incompressible. If it is not possible that at the application of external force there is a change in the length or dimensions of fluid. It cannot expand nor get compressed. So we call that kind of fluid as incompressible flow. If its dimension cannot be changed with the application of the external force then obviously the volumetric strain there will be no change in the volumetric strain rate and therefore that will be zero in that condition. Shear strain rate at a point is defined as half of the rate of decrease of the angle between the two initially perpendicular line that intersect at a point. As I show you in the diagrams in the beginning that when the shear strain exists then how do we measure it then the change of angle that take place between 
two vertical lines will be representing this uh, shear stress strain and this ray it can be expressed in cartesian coordinates as epsilon xy equals to half of partial derivative of u with respect to y plus partial derivative of v with respect to x epsilon zx that will be with equal to half of partial derivative of w with respect to x plus partial derivative of u with respect to z and finally the third component will be half of partial derivative of v with respect to z plus partial derivative of w with respect to y so these are three components in the x y z direction in cartesian coordinates so rectangle or otherwise uh, what we call as rectangular coordinates we can combine the linear strain rate and shear strain rate into one symmetric second order tensor called the strain rate tensor you can see the format of the tensor you can see the shear strain rate components and this can be represented in a beautiful symmetric matrix and this form of tensor it fulfills all mathematical rules that are applied to tensors so therefore that fits in very nicely in our tensor calculus and mathematics and uh, we can represent it easily the shear strain rain and the three components you can see in the relevant direction at the relevant places represented in a very symmetric tensor matrix